In this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a few tips and giving out a couple of methods and testing them on how to get more out of your underpowered welder. Now when I say underpowered, I don't mean all 110 volt welders, just any welder where you might be trying to squeeze a little bit more out of it than it can actually give, if you know what I'm saying. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So one of the big tips is if you can, always weld in the uphill position or going vertical up. On a lot of vertical up joints, it requires less heat to produce the same weld as it would in the flat position. And that's because, well, as everyone knows, heat rises. So if you can, try and position it so that you're welding somewhat uphill or vertical up. Now I know this is realistically not possible, so there are a few other methods that I'm going to show and that I'm going to test here. Now just to get what I think are the best results out of what I can do here, just some you know non-scientific testing, I will be running everything uphill but not quite vertical up. More of a 45 degree angle. So the three methods I'm going to be testing out today have to do with material prep, and this is key if you want to get good penetration and a strong weld. Now the three types of material prep that I'm testing are no prep, all I've done is clean the area around the weld, chamfer or bevel, there's no gap, I've just beveled or put a small bevel, that's a chamfer by the way, in the material to allow the weld to kind of sink in and get a little bit more penetration. And the last one that I'm gonna test is gonna be the open root, the open butt root joint configuration. Now I couldn't get any actual arc shots of the butt joint itself, the actual welding part of the joint, because my camera wouldn't focus while I was trying some new things, so I'm not really trying those anymore. But this is basically what it looks like. The weld is not really digging in all that much. This material I'm using is probably close to 3 eighths of an inch thick, maybe 5 sixteenths, or 15 sixteenths, pardon me but I'm not really sure I didn't measure it. So it's way thicker than what my welder can weld in a single pass. And you'll see that reflected on the backside of the weld because I'm gonna flip everything over and we're gonna check for penetration. Now the second one, which is the chamfer or the bevel, I kind of have mismatched bevels on the plates um, or pieces of angle, that was kind of my fault, is going a little bit better. The weld is definitely sinking in there a little bit and I may have had a slight little gap when welding it that's just a fit up problem. I didn't, you know, fit these up too tightly since they're not critical pieces. It's just a practice piece. But you might be able to see this. The weld is sinking in a lot more. It's digging in a little bit more. As for the open root weld, I think you guys know how this is going to go. This is something useful to know. You don't have to be necessarily the best at it unless, you know, it's your job to be welding open root, in which case you should probably be the best that you can. But it's a good, but it's a good technique to know in situations like this. Now obviously this is gonna get the best penetration because we're actually welding essentially the backside from the front. I'm not gonna get too in depth into open root welding. I don't know too much about it. This is just a little technique. For the root, I'm just using some 6011 since I don't think my machine can run 6010 and I don't have any handy. And I'm trying kind of a mix of the whip and paws and a little Christmas tree technique with just a bunch of little triangles. The Christmas tree method was showcased by the guys over at WeldTube. Great welding channel, I'll link them down in the description below. After I put the root pass in, which I've left the sound on for because I just wanted you guys to kind of hear what it sounds like, I put a little cap of some 7018 and I didn't really stick to any codes or anything. I just kind of did whatever I wanted. I probably could have done two stringers if I wanted to. I just kind of wanted to weave. Didn't turn out very well, but I just wanted to weave. Now we're gonna take a look at the backside, starting with the no material prep, other than just a little bit of cleaning where the weld was gonna go. As you can see, there's really no heat affected zone on the back. I mean, there's a little bit of mill scale there. However, there's nothing poking through. You can't see any reinforcement on the backside. This weld would by far be the easiest one out of these three to break. Moving on to the chamfered or beveled weld without a root or a large gap to stitch up. This one is a lot better since there was a tiny bit of a gap but nothing to really make it an open root. It did penetrate a little bit more but it obviously sunk in much deeper and if you look through you can see through the little tiny gap the weld metal actually it sunk about halfway into the plate. This one I think would still be fairly easy to break if you hit it hard enough. However it's much stronger than just putting a butt weld on the plate without any prep. Now the open root weld is by far the best of these three. It's not great, it's not a great open root weld. There could be more reinforcement on the back. 
But the point I'm trying to make here is, even though there isn't a ton of reinforcement on the back, this one is still by far the best, just because of the fact that it's got the most reinforcement on the backside, and that's what you want. If you're trying to weld thicker material with an underpowered welder, you're gonna want to try and get as much penetration as possible, and this is probably the way to do it. Now, there are a few things you can do where you can bevel both sides and put welds in and fill it in from both sides, but if you're just doing it from one side, I would have to say, the open root method, going uphill or vertical, would probably be the best thing to do if you're lacking the amperage to actually weld the piece in one pass, or just a few passes. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope these tips were somewhat helpful. This is not a definitive guide. You know, if you have something that works for you and makes a stronger weld than these, by, by all means, go ahead and do it. But I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, obviously, and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you guys next week. I don't guys, know what you so want. I'm back. Let's have As you may a bit of fun. Last week. Again, that's because of the holidays. And my love, I just want to spend some time if with my family. you feel I'm not like I do to right much. now. Anyways, I'm back. Hope you guys had a good holiday season. Whatever you celebrate, and I really hope you guys had a good year. I'm looking forward to 2018 in real life and also on YouTube.